Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dharma Helper and this is DH Reviews. This is my Season 2 Episode 7 review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you missed any of my previous Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. videos, there will be a link in the description of this video. As well as an annotation behind me on the screen, you can click either of those and that will take you right to the playlist that has all of my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. videos in it. Also, earlier this week, I did my Constantine Season 1 Episode 3 review and my Gotham Season 1 Episode 8 review. And those will be linked in the description of this video as well for you to check out if you're interested in my thoughts on those series. That being said, let's jump into it. Uh, season, one, uh, season 2 Episode 7 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was called The Writing on the Wall. And in this episode, we get a lot of answers about Project Tahiti and about the carvings and about all that going on as well as some interesting character beats. Uh, the main story of this episode was the tattooed guy from two weeks ago uh, going around and killing and carving up uh, other people who seem to be making those same markings and who seem to be making those same drawings and stuff. And the idea is to find him before he kills everybody that was involved in Project Tahiti uh, so let's talk about the characters uh, in this episode before we get into a lot of uh, the revelations and story beats that I want to talk about. Let's talk about the characters that, uh, that we saw in this episode. And let's start with Coulson, who goes into the memory machine in order to track down more information about Project Tahiti. And we learn that these guys that uh, the tattooed gentleman is killing are all ex-shield agents, as is he. And uh, they were all part of the original Project Tahiti uh, test group, I guess you could call it, where they were they had cancer or they were sick or injured, and they were given uh, GH three twenty five to uh, help them with that. And we see the early stages of Project Tahiti as Coulson is monitoring these agents, and initially they look pretty good and uh, they are they're holding up okay, and. Uh, and then we start to see the degeneration and the madness that he was talking about that drove him uh, away from 325 and from Project Tahiti. And one, ag one agent in particular in these studies is holding up um, a little bit better, it would seem, than the others. And it turns out that this is the tattooed guy and, uh, you know, he's got that sleeve of the map or whatever that he's drawing and, and it, uh, it's carved on his flesh. And so they use that information to find him and track him down. And the, the thing I want to talk about, about Coulson in this episode, uh, aside from all that nice background stuff on Project Tahiti, is uh, now that he is cured, it looks like, cured, almost, there could be residual effects, but we haven't seen those yet. Uh, and that's the question that I have is, will there be residual effects now that he seems cured or fixed? Uh, now he's got this mission of finding what they figured out and how is he going to balance that new obsession with now that he's cured now that he's can focus on uh, uh, building shield up where is he going to strike that balance of okay now we have all this information about what's going on with the drawings and uh, and then on the other hand we have shield is in a pretty sorry state of affairs how can how can Coulson be director of shield and continue to look into this, uh, look into this mystery, and look into what's going on with what they found out. That's pretty much my thoughts on Coulson this episode. Again, not a very character-heavy episode, more so story-heavy and and revealing a lot of what's been going on with the Tahiti and all that. So the other character that I wanted to bring up is Simmons, and in this episode, Simmons has a line. Uh, when talking to Fitz and Mac, uh, that really spoke to me and really, I felt like I had to bring it up to you guys. She says something very sarcastic or, or uh, bitter and, and jealous to Mac when Mac's talking about uh, a mission briefing or something. And to me, again, going back to that, that triangle, that relationship between Mac and Fitz and Simmons and Fitz and Mac and Simmons and uh, what... What my thought is, is that's not Simmons. That bitter, jealous uh, uh, Simmons that we saw in this episode, that's not Simmons. And it was kind of uncomfortable and kind of 
uh, alarming to see her do that. And I'm wondering where that's going to head and at what point that's going to come to a head and either Mac or Fitz is going to say, Simmons, uh, your behavior is a little bit childish, uh, so you, you need to keep your distance and let us do our thing. Or is Mac going to say, you know what, uh, what's your problem? Because Mac to me seems like a guy that, that is going to be not afraid to confront things. And so Mac and Simmons, con a, a confrontation on that end is going to be pretty cool to watch. But again, that just seemed like that wasn't Simmons. Uh, that was a little out of character of Simmons. And so where that develops is going to be cool to watch. But uh, talking about Fitz, wrapping up my thoughts on characters, because again, not a lot happened with characters in this episode that I, that I feel like I can talk about. But wrapping up my thoughts about characters in terms of Fitz, uh, they have... Fitz and Mac have a conversation about uh, computer backups and file backups. Well, they're talking about Coulson and how uh, his memories of Tahiti aren't deleted, uh, but they're blocked. And so Mac has the idea and says, you know, are you, uh, do you have file backups in your brain? So I'm glad that we're seeing that the two of them are slowly starting to work out not only how to cope with Fitz being different at this stage, but also the possibility of bringing Fitz back a little bit to the way that he was and a little, uh, uh, bringing the, 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 the brain back to a better state, uh, bringing Fitz back to a better state of mind where he can function better. And that journey of those two doing that and then Fitz also being a little bit on the outside and being jealous is going to play a huge part in their season moving forward and I'm I'm interested and I am ready to watch that 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 looks like that's going to be an interesting arc for those three characters and again not a lot happened in terms of characters in this episode uh, so that kind of wraps up my thoughts on characters what did you guys think we saw a little bit from Ward and a little bit from Sky and a little bit uh, from Morse is it Morse Bobby I'm just gonna call her Bobby Bobby and uh, Hunter, but nothing too noteworthy, nothing to talk about. Uh, Ward is apparently backstabbing Hydra uh, to get on Coulson's good side and get on Sky's good side. Uh, so, talking about Ward just for a second, this is the kind of stuff that I was hoping we'd see from him other uh, earlier this season. Uh, lone agent sort of cleaning up his mess. Uh, this seems more compelling and more interesting to me to watch than him in a cell whining and complaining about how much Sky uh, and him are going to be together. And all that. This is a much better way to take that character. Whether it's genuine or not, whether he's working with Hydra or not, that's a good question to ask. That's a good way to take this character. And uh, what happens with Ward for the rest of the season, as long as he doesn't fall into that pitfall of, uh, I did all this stuff for you, now Sky, can you, we be friends? As long as he doesn't fall into that pitfall of talking about Sky every five seconds, he's an okay character. He's a good character. Let's, let's keep that going. So that wraps up my thoughts on, on characters. Let's get into the story of this episode and the reveals of this episode. As I said... The big reveal in this episode was what's going on with Project Ahiti and what's going on with the drawings. And Sky thought it might be a map uh, two weeks ago in that episode. And or was it two weeks ago? When, whenever it was where she thought it might be a map. And they kept drawing it. And Coulson says they're missing pieces. And this lady who is uh, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, who uh, also has been drawing it and has pieces that Coulson didn't have. And... We learned in Project Tahiti that uh, everybody who got infused with this DNA felt a compulsion to draw these carvings, uh, and it was almost like the source, the the original being that had the DNA, uh, might have been on a mission and might have been imprinting telepathically this desire to go to this place, but... Uh, Everything that they drew, they couldn't figure it out. And I swear to you, I swear to you I had this revelation minutes ahead of the episode. 
minutes ahead of when they revealed this in the episode, I was watching it, and I said, you know, why don't they try attacking it from a different angle? Why don't they try maybe making a 3D map of everything that Coulson has drawn, or a 3D sort of scenario where they can figure it out that way? And then we see it in the train, in the model train set, that it's not a 2D drawing of a map. It's a 3D drawing or a 3D interpretation of some kind of a city. And as soon as Coulson sees that, he's cured and he no longer has the impulsion to carve. And as soon as Tattoo Guy sees that, he's cured and he no longer has the impulsion to carve. So we learn in this episode that uh, the being that GH325 is based off uh, maybe was sent on a mission or some kind of a, a, of a task to find this city and he was and that's maybe how he came to earth that's my theory is that he came to earth looking for this city at, or crashed or something and was picked up and experimented on and so the question is what is this city why is it so important and uh, why was he looking for it and so now we get into theories and now we get into a point where uh, if you're uncomfortable with possible spoilers for the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, or possible spoilers for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that, uh, go ahead and and uh, maybe mute. I'll put something up like I did the last time. Maybe mute this or uh, I'll try not to get into too much spoilers. Uh, my theory, right? Okay, you have you have Garrett who was in, uh, injected with 325 and carved. You have the original, let's say the original six. Was it six? Those guys who had that impulsion to find this place and carve. You have Coulson who had the impulsion to find the place and carve. And then you have Sky, right? Who did not have the compulsion to find this place. And my theory is that she did not have the impulsion to find the place that they were carving because she had already been there. She had already seen this place. Uh, perhaps as a child, perhaps as a baby, she had been born there. That's where she is from. And she doesn't want to, she has that, she doesn't have the compulsion to draw it because she's already been there. Because she knows where the place is, uh, somewhere in her mind. Uh, going back to that idea of files not being deleted, but being blocked. Somewhere in her brain is that location. Uh, maybe as a toddler. And that would kind of explain why her father knows more about the diviner, the obelisk, than anybody else. Because it has that markings, has those markings on it uh, to the point where maybe the diviner is from this place. Or maybe the Diviner is something that uh, the people who are from this place found and, and were able to use. Uh, so, going back to that idea of what is this place, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe recently announced uh, an Inhumans movie. And it's been going around, and this is this is the point where Spoilers. I'll probably put something up. Spoilers. Uh, this has been going around for a while. This theory that there are Inhumans on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, Sky might be an Inhuman. Or uh, Sky's father might be an Inhuman. Or uh, somebody on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. might be an Inhuman. And my understanding of the Inhumans is that they also happen to have a secret underground city. Uh, where they live away from other people and where they can operate among themselves. And that might be where Sky's from, that might be where her father's from, that might be where uh, somebody else on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is from. Um, that's just my thought on it. Is this the Inhuman City? Is this the Marvel Cinematic way to introduce Inhumans uh, ahead of the movie and to, tell, and to tell us a little bit more about the Inhumans before the movie? Uh, it could also be Wakanda because there's a Black Panther movie. Um, but the likelihood that it is Wakanda is a lot less 
than the likelihood that it is this secret underground inhuman city uh, that Sky's from or that her father's from or that maybe Reyna because she can pick up the obelisk right and and not be poisoned by it or something along those lines so that's my thought is that um, this blue guy this Kree uh, was sent to earth to find the inhumans he crashed he was picked up by the SSR we saw in the agent Carter preview he was picked up by the SSR he was used to make G8325 he was in his telepathic de desire to find this place was imprinted on everybody who didn't know where it was uh, since Sky knows where where it was she didn't get the impulsion to draw because you know going back to that idea of as soon as Coulson saw that it was a map that it was a city he didn't have the impulsion to draw so obviously somewhere deep down inside Sky knew that it was a city and she knew where it was and she didn't have the desire to look for it so that kind of wraps up my thoughts and my theories about this episode again solid episode uh, I'm glad that it took this ep this whole episode to really flesh out that idea of what's going on with this city and what's going on with the uh, blue guy that we saw and really give a lot of answers rather than just let these questions hang and let these question ha questions hang uh, you took that time uh, from after the break after the one week break to open up and to say, all right, now this is what it is. Now the question is, can they find it? And is Sky going to be crucial in helping uh, the team find this city? And when they find it, what will they find? Will they find more inhumans? Will they find inhumans that are going to be in the movie? Will they find maybe Vin Diesel, because I heard Vin Diesel uh, had been hinting at maybe being an inhuman, and I think it would be hilarious to have Vin Diesel on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's gonna, that's my crackpot theory, is that Vin Diesel is going to be Agents of, be on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Will they find the inhumans? Will they find the city? I don't know. What I do know is that this was a solid episode, and... Uh, I'm interested to see, again, a number of things. Uh, first and foremost, what is this city? Is it the Inhuman City? Is it not the Inhuman City? What are we going to find out about the city this ep this season? Uh, number two, what's going on with Fitz and Sky and Simmons, or Fitz and Simmons and uh, Mac, and where is the boiling point for that going to be? Number three, now that it's been hinted at that there might be a way to bring Fitz back to full capacity, what is that going to be? What is that going to be like? Is he going to want to go back to that? What's his relationship going to change with Mac? Uh, what's his relationship going to change with Simmons? Number four, and kind of wrapping up my thoughts on the review here. What's going on with Ward? Is he genuine? Is he trying to help S.H.I.E.L.D.? Or is he just, again, playing that long game of, of if I present enough evidence to Sky, she's going to trust me and then I can bring her to her father. Uh, we did see at the end of the episode or at the end of Ward's episode that he's going after his brother. So more of that con that confrontation is going to be interesting. Um, I'm rooting for Christian, uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, that'll do it for my thoughts on this review, guys. Um, if you enjoyed the review, leave a like. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, talk about it in the comments down below, uh, or hit me up on Twitter at the DH Reviews. If you want to see more reviews like this, subscribe to the channel. You'll see my reviews as they come out. Mondays will be Constantine, Tuesdays will be Gotham, Wednesdays will be Agents of Shield, and Thursdays will be Scorpion. Um, uh, if you want to go ahead and watch those, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and you'll see those as they come out. Share this video on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, wherever you got the wherever you got to get this video out there to build this channel and uh, build uh, a good community around these videos. Go ahead and do that. Uh, wrapping up my my thoughts again, I made an announcement video last week 
where I said that I'd like to review the finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. live and the premiere of Agent Carter live. So I learned that uh, the dates for those after recording that video. And so the dates, I believe, are... Let me check. Just wrapping things up here. December 9th is going to be the, the finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for the winter. And so maybe have the, uh, the uh, live stream review be on the 10th, that Wednesday, in the afternoon. If, if that works out, that'll probably be it. Uh, again, probably about 6.45 in the afternoon. Uh, and then I think Agent Carter is January 6th. And so uh, January 7th will be the review, about 6.45 in the afternoon. Uh, more details on that as I get that hammered out, but I just thought I'd touch base with you guys on that and let you guys know that I know the dates, so more details on that are going to be coming, and that's going to be the two live streams uh, that are going to happen uh, is the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. finale and then the Agent Carter premiere. So with that being said, I've been Dharma Helper, this has been DH Reviews, and I will see you guys in the next video.